We hear the voice of Maggie Vogel, a teenage girl, calling her father Wade on the phone. She's trapped in the city as a strict curfew has been enforced due to a devastating zombie outbreak caused by the necroembolist virus that turns people into the undead. Maggie urges her dad not to come looking for her as it would be too dangerous and she tells him she loves him before hanging up. As the virus ravaged the world, panic and desperation gripped communities. Farmers, fearing further spread, resorted to drastic measures, setting fields ablaze. Ignoring Maggie's caution, Wade embarked on a perilous journey through the desolate wasteland, driven by love for his daughter. Amidst the chaos, armed authorities located Maggie, forcibly relocating her to a quarantine zone at the local hospital, joining others afflicted by the contagion. In this bleak reality, survival hung by a thread and Wade's determination to reunite with his daughter tested the limits of courage in a world teetering on the brink of collapse. Upon examination, doctors discover Maggie has a bite wound on her arm and the lethal virus is gradually spreading through her body, inevitably turning her into a zombie. Authorities allow Wade to take Maggie home to settle her affairs and spend what little time she has left as a human before the infection fully consumes her and she requires complete quarantine. On their drive back, they stop at a store for Maggie to get sunglasses and Wade has his first terrifying encounter with a zombie, which he neutralizes by violently breaking its neck. As Wade returns with the ailing Maggie to their home, Caroline, Maggie's stepmother, confronts the grim reality awaiting them. With heavy hearts, they decide to shield younger siblings Bobby and Molly from Maggie's deteriorating condition, sending them to relatives for safety. Alone with Bobby, Maggie shares a somber conversation, her illness casting a shadow over their bond. Bobby, wise beyond his years, grasps the severity and finality of Maggie's fate, confronting the harsh truth with a maturity that belies his age, Amid the turmoil, the family navigates the delicate balance between hope and despair, clinging to each other as they confront the unforgiving grip of the pandemic and the inevitable loss it threatens to inflict upon them. In the following days, Wade burns his crop fields as a preventative measure. Maggie remains largely confined to her room, trying to contact friends in denial about her situation. One day, she cuts her finger which starts oozing thick, Black fluid an early sign of the virus progressing. Panicked, Maggie severs the entire finger and disposes of it down the garbage disposal. She retreats outside where she and Wade tragically encounter their neighbor Nathan and his daughter Julia, who have already fully transformed into zombies. Wade is forced to kill Nathan with a hatchet to protect himself and Maggie. When Julia approaches, Maggie flees in horror before witnessing Wade's next grisly act. Though no one blames him, Wade is overwhelmed with guilt and sorrow at having to kill his longtime neighbors and friends. Wade finds solace in visiting Bonnie, a mourning widow burdened by regret and anguish. Bonnie wrestles with conflicting emotions, lamenting her decision not to isolate her undead husband and daughter, despite the risks. She grapples with the guilt of subjecting her loved ones to the hospital's inhumane treatment, where infected patients are treated as mere lab specimens rather than fellow humans deserving of compassion. In the depths of her sorrow, Bonnie finds a kindred spirit in Wade, sharing their mutual struggles against a world ravaged by disease and the moral dilemmas it imposes upon those faced with impossible choices. At a doctor's visit, Wade is given three unimaginable options for Maggie's fate one take her to quarantine immediately, which he refuses, two give her the same euthanasia drug cocktail they would at quarantine, allowing her to pass away at home with family rather than strangers. Though the doctor warns it would be an extremely painful death, or three simply make it quick himself with a gunshot to provide a swifter, more merciful end. Agonized, Wade decides to spend Maggie's remaining days bonding and making final memories together. They joke about Caroline's cooking and discuss Maggie's biological mother whom she never met. Maggie's friend Allie comes to visit and convinces her to sneak out for one last night hanging out with their group around a bonfire. There they encounter another infected teen, Trent, who says he plans to blow his brains out when his time comes. Maggie and Trent share a tender moment, exchanging a kiss born of yearnful despair. Afterward, a tearful alley drives Maggie home alone. 
As the days progress, Maggie's eyes lose their color and her senses start to deteriorate at one point claiming to smell food when Caroline insists there are no odors. Disturbed, Maggie visits Trent's house, finding his father holding a gun outside the boy's bedroom, trying to coax Trent out now that his condition has worsened enough to require quarantine. Trent refuses, and when authorities arrive, they brutally extract the thrashing, inhuman boy from his home as his father witnesses the horrific scene in anguish. As Maggie's transformation accelerates, her humanity slips further away. One fateful day, she ventures into the woods, stumbling upon a small fox, a hapless victim of her insatiable hunger. In her increasingly zombified state, she attacks and feeds upon the innocent creature returning home with her face smeared in blood, her actions chillingly disconnected from her former self. Stunned, her parents witness Maggie's eerie description of the fox, grappling with the horror of her descent into darkness. Wade, stealing himself for the grim task ahead, ventures into the woods to investigate, where he is confronted with the heartbreaking sight of the mangled creature, forced to grant it merciful release from Maggie's unwitting cruelty. At her wit's end, Caroline begs Wade to call the authorities to take Maggie away before it's too late. Police show up, but Wade fights them off, not ready to surrender his daughter. Maggie defuses the situation, assuring the officers she's still coherent so they'll leave without her. As a final act, Wade takes Maggie to the garden where her late biological mother grew white daisies, hoping to give her one last moment of peace before her imminent descent into a subhuman, violent state. He vows she won't be going anywhere until the heartbreaking end. In the final harrowing days, Maggie's transformation is complete her once vibrant features are now replaced by a sickly gray pallor, her eyes consumed by darkness. Wade sits in the dimly lit living room, his grip tight on the shotgun, bracing himself for the agonizing decision he's long postponed. Suddenly, Maggie emerges, a specter of her former self, her every movement a macabre dance of death. Yet, in a poignant moment of fleeting humanity, she approaches Wade's slumbering form. Instead of succumbing to her primal instincts, she leans down and tenderly kisses his forehead, a final act of love and recognition amidst the chaos of her undead existence. In that bittersweet moment, father and daughter share an unspoken farewell, their bond transcending the horrors that engulf them. Maggie then heads to the roof, perhaps remembering her mother's garden and finding solace in the idea of reuniting with her in whatever way she can. As haunting visions of her childhood at play in the daisies fill her mind, Maggie steps off the roof, ending her life and joining her mother in death over inflicting suffering on her loved ones as an undead monster a final act of love for her family. The movie ends here. Thanks for watching.